7 o'clock this morning, the U.S. The U.S. has surpassed China and Italy in the number of confirmed coronavirus cases. This morning, we're giving you the facts to put your fears to rest. Experts suggest that you should have about two weeks worth of food at home, and there's one Spokane Valley business whose aim is to make it easier to stock up by changing the way they sell. Thank you very much for joining us this morning on Up With Krim. I'm Joshua Robinson. As you can see, the whole team is here. I am in studio as Jen York, Evan Arani, and Dana Marie McNichol are all working from home. You might have noticed that this is all part of our concerted effort to social distance. Nobody is in quarantine. We just want to make sure that we are practicing safe practices like so many of you have been asked to as well. Jen has the latest coming up on the coronavirus cases nationwide. Evan will track the forecast this morning, including a chance for rain. And Dana Marie is bringing back a story about a local Paralympian that we first told you about last month to talk about now that these games are postponed, what that means for her. Of course, all of those stories coming up in our next hour of Up With Krim. Of course, we do want to also get you up to speed on what you missed overnight news wise. And new this morning, Governor Jay Inslee has announced that he will be waiving some health care licenses and child care background check requirements. This move is meant to ease the strain on the health care and child care industries during the coronavirus outbreak. Governor Inslee says that these waivers will deliver much needed relief during this pandemic. And this includes waiving a federal fingerprint background check requirement for child care workers, not requiring the Department of Children, Youth and Families to set up in-person family visits, and Washington financial report filing deadlines will be extended by 30 days. Now, this announcement came following the governor's statement that the infection rate from the coronavirus in Washington is slowing down to some degree. He said that the signs, the this is a sign that the restrictions that are put in place over the past few weeks might be working, but he does say Washington still needs to increase its testing measures. We already cannot meet the demands coming in from around the state, however, for these critical supplies. Now, shipments of personal protective equipment for health care workers have arrived in Washington state. Those shipments come from the federal government, but we've also seen supplies coming in from private vendors and community donations that continue to pour in. We are also tracking breaking news this morning. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is now the first world leader to test positive for the coronavirus. He sent out a tweet overnight saying that he only had mild symptoms and he would continue to lead Britain's COVID-19 response. He says he is self-isolating and working from home today. As of this morning, the UK has 11,816 confirmed cases overall. Time now at 7.03 to check in with Jen York, who joins us from home to tell us the latest on COVID-19. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Joshua. Yeah, I heard you just talking about numbers in the UK this morning. The U.S. is surpassing every country in the world with the most amount of coronavirus cases. Right now, the U.S. has 85,000 cases and it's growing. This is according to Johns Hopkins University. Now, China has nearly 82,000 cases and Italy trails behind with roughly 81,000 cases. Yesterday, the White House Coronavirus Task Force gave an update on a possible vaccine. Take a listen. But one of the things that we are going to do that you need to understand that has been a stumbling block for previous development of vaccines, and that is even before you know something works, at risk, you have to start producing it. Now, health leaders say it could take up to one year to complete clinical trials an additional six months after that to get it on the market for the public. Now, here are three things you need to know about coronavirus today. Happening today, the House of Representatives is set to vote on a $2.2 trillion stimulus economic package. Now, the Senate unanimously passed that bill on Wednesday. The bill provides hundreds of billions of dollars in aid to big and small businesses, as well as help for individual Americans. If passed, President Trump says he plans to sign it into law right away. In a letter to U.S. governors, the president says he will also categorize the coronavirus response across the country. He will label areas high, medium, and low risk for the virus. He says it's to encourage leaders to reopen their businesses. Now, the president says he wants the nation back open by Easter, and that's about two weeks from Sunday, though health leaders are concerned that may be too early. 
A new unemployment numbers are out this morning. U.S. jobless claims hit 3.3 million. Experts say that is quadruple the previous record set in 1982. Spokane had the biggest jump in Washington state in unemployment claims. Now this morning, Moses Lake leaders are reporting the city's first confirmed case of coronavirus. They say a high school staff member tested positive. They were last at school on March 16th. Anyone believed to have been exposed will be contacted by the Grant County Health District. The Washington Department of Health, meanwhile, reports there are now 67 cases in Spokane County. Right now, there are no deaths in the Spokane area, but experts say at least seven patients were hospitalized. Okanagan County has one case this morning. Grant County has 33 and one death. King County has more than 1,500 cases and 109 deaths. Statewide, there are 3,200 cases and the death toll is now 147. Now across state line, right now the Panhandle Health District reports 10 cases in Kootenai County. The Idaho Department of Health and Welfare reports three deaths in the state. Experts say the victims were men older than 60 and all lived in southern Idaho. Statewide, Idaho reports 190 cases. Back out here live in my living room. It is Friday morning. We've made it through the end of a work week. We're transitioning to this work from home process. Evan, I know you've been bringing us the forecast all week from your living room. How are things shaping up for the weekend? Well, it looks like uh, we're going to be in store for kind of a showery weekend in general. We're going to see plenty of rain and a little bit of snow up towards some of the higher elevations, but it's not going to be anything really widespread, which is the promising message I can give to you that most of what we're actually going to be seeing is going to be cloudy skies and then the occasional drizzle. What we've got right now on radar shows that were mostly dry across the state of Washington. North Idaho is where we're seeing the majority of our impacts right now. Uh, as we head into the afternoon, though, we're expecting those temperatures to make their way to the upper 40s. 47 is that afternoon high, just five degrees shy of our average of what we would expect, which is 52 degrees. So we are going to have some time to warm up into the weekend. Your Saturday and Sunday actually do make it to the mid 50s. Uh, wind gusts are going to be a concern, though, throughout the course of the weekend. So we'll make it up to the teens and then 20 mile per hour range for our wind gusts. Uh, that's going to be of primary concern for our Monday afternoon. So make sure to join us on Monday here in, on Up With Graham as we'll have more details on uh, where we see those wind gusts increasing. And and uh, about the rain and snow that could be back in the forecast toward the beginning of next week. So it could be a good weekend to maybe enjoy a book at home or a new show on Netflix, make a cup of coffee or a cup of hot chocolate, uh, and uh, maybe stick to indoors because we're not going to see all that much of the sun over the course of the weekend. I'll send things over to Danny Marie McNichol at home as well. Hi, Danny Marie. Hi, Evan. Yeah, trending this morning is a topic of Tokyo 2021. Now, it's a hashtag you might be seeing a lot on social media since both the Olympics and Paralympics have unfortunately been postponed for another year. Now we have seen athletes around the world come to social media to express their feelings, especially athletes here training in the Inland Northwest. They're adjusting to their regimen. Uh, Jalene Roberts, we introduced you to her about a month ago on Up With Creme. She really does have an incredible story. She's training six days a week in Spokane Valley with her eyes set on the Paralympic Games this summer. She actually had plans to travel to Tokyo in April with some of the top athletes around the world to test out the facilities in Tokyo but of course that's also canceled. So she's an Eastern Washington student and currently the best long jumper in the country. She's pretty much a track and field star altogether. She's been training three years for this moment and on social media she expressed um, and quote said, it's healthy to admit that you're not okay. It's okay to be not okay. That's brave. Don't let it win. It's not a goodbye, but just see you later. Here's what she told me in her response. Um. For me personally, I've struggled with feeling like I'm in this alone and I've had to remind myself that everyone is fighting their own battle and that we're all in this together and that when we come out of this, we're going to be so much stronger and more united. And in the meantime, I think that the most important thing is to maintain a positive support system and positive thoughts um, and trusting that everything is going to be okay because it will. 
It will, Jalene. And, you know, the Olympic Committee said that although it's going to happen in 2021, they will still be called the Olympic and Paralympic Games of 2020. And just a fun fact here, Olympics have never been rescheduled for anything other than war. That happened in 1916, 1940, and 1944. Now, if you have athletes in your life, uh, no matter at what level, send them their love because on social media, they've been training hard for if it's that, you know, that college football game, basketball game, athletes around the world preparing for the Paralympics. It's just, it's tough to see, but they're going to come out stronger on the other end. And Dana, right, Josh, Dana Marie, when you uh, first brought us her story, it was such a beautifully told story. So I'd imagine there's probably some things that she said that touched you specifically because we're all kind of sharing that same struggle, right? Yeah, of course. I mean, she has been training for this for three years now and to see that have to be postponed a year is really tough, but we're supporting her from afar. Social distancing, right? Yeah, we appreciate you bringing us this update on that story this morning, Dana Marie. We'll check back in with you in just a little bit as we approach 7-Eleven this morning. We know a lot of you have questions about the coronavirus, and this morning we are bringing those questions directly to one of our local health experts. After the break, we are talking with Dr. Bob Lutz from the Spokane Regional Health District. We're also going to take a look outside. We promised that more weather forecasts from Evan's living room this morning. We also want to let you know that teachers from Fernand STEM Academy in Coeur d'Alene have some messages for their students. Now, if you are also a teacher with a message for your students, you can send them to us at 509-448-2000. Good morning. My name is Kathy Livingston. I'm the principal of Fernand STEM Academy. I just wanted to give a shout out to all of our Fernand families out there and let you know that just because our physical building is closed right now doesn't mean our school spirit is. It's alive and well. We hope you're reading, doing your POG challenges, and mostly being good to one another. Take care. We love and miss you. Stay well.